The origin of the name Saba is believed to come from a type of banana called Saing Saba or Sapa by the locals. The name Saba was first used in the 15th century by wandering traders between North Borneo and the Sulu Islands before the arrival of the British. In a Portuguese map from Malacca in 1604, the Kota Kinabalu area was referred to as Api Api. During the reign of the North Borneo Chartered Company in 1881, Saba was officially named North Borneo. The name Saba was used again in 1963 during the formation of Malaysia. Javanese poem Nagarakartagama, written by Prapancha in 1365, mentions Saba as Seludang. Marco Polo, during his visit to Saba in 1292, recorded Saba as being known as Borni, which may refer to Brunei. Studies in the Mansili Valley in Lahad Datu found evidence of the earliest human archaeological occupation, dating back 235,000 years, to the arrival of the earliest humans 30,000 years ago. Human migration to Borneo and the surrounding areas began around 20,000 to 30,000 years ago. It is believed that the earliest humans were from the Australoid and Negrito, or Austroasiatic ethnic groups. Later waves of human migration are believed to have come from the Proto-Austronesian people around 3000 BC. Around 500 BC, the Deutero-Austronesian people arrived, causing the Proto-Austronesians to move inland. Austronesia is the ancestor of the indigenous people of Saba and the surrounding islands. Austronesia brought Austronesian culture and language to Borneo and spread it west and south. The Australoid people are believed to have assimilated with the Austronesians. Artifacts found show that Neolithic people used stone tools and began polishing stones with symmetrical lines 5,000 years ago. Earthenware pottery, cave coffins, weaving, boat building, dating back 3,000 years were also found. 2,500 years ago, bronze became a tool for humans and was traded. Iron smelting, including beads from Indochina and ceramics from China, was introduced in 700 AD in the 7th century, Chinese records state that there was an advanced settlement and port in northwest Borneo called Vijayapura, controlled by Srivijaya in Sumatra. It was founded by a prince of Funan with the help of the locals. In the early 9th century, there was a kingdom called Poni believed to exist at the mouth of the Brunei River, becoming the predecessor of the Brunei Sultanate. Poni was the center of Sabah and Sarawak, and a trading center for Chinese merchants. Poni was influenced by two great powers at the time, Srivijaya in Sumatra and later Majapahit in Java. Brunei Sultanate began after the Brunei Kingdom embraced Islam during the reign of the fifth Sultan, known as Bolkiah from 1473 to 1524. The Sultan's sphere of influence included Sabah, the Sulu Islands, and Manila to the north, and Sarawak to Banjarmasin in the south. An old manuscript from the Idahan people mentioned Abdullah as the first Muslim in eastern Sabah in 1408. In the early 15th century, the Malacca Sultanate spread its influence in trade and Islam to the Brunei region through Malacca traders. The Brunei Sultanate took over the leadership of Islam after the fall of Malacca to the Portuguese in 1511. Brunei Sultanate expanded its influence northward to Luzon and Sulu, and south and west to Borneo. In the 16th century, the Brunei historical record recorded the arrival and diplomatic relations of Chinese traders in Sabah. Archaeological evidence shows that the Chinese exchanged Chinese ceramics and native Sabah products. In 1521, Antonio Pigafetta, historian who joined Ferdinand Magellan's exploration of the Spice Islands, arrived in Brunei and was welcomed extravagantly. Pigafetta referred to Brunei as Borneo, according to European pronunciation. European sailors then used the name Borneo for the whole island of Borneo due to Brunei's influence at that time. In 1526, Portuguese explorers led by Menezes visited Brunei. In 1571, Spain conquered Manila. In 1578, Spanish fleet of ships and an army consisting of Spanish soldiers, Mestizo and native Philippines, attacked and conquered Brunei. Due to dysentery and opposition from Brunei soldiers and Borneo natives, Spanish withdrew from Brunei. In 1665, Captain Cowley was the first Englishman to visit Borneo. During the Brunei Civil War, which lasted from 1660 to 1673, Sultan Muhyiddin of Brunei requested the assistance of Sulu Sultanate Army to fight rebels on Cherman Island. He promised to give Sabah to the Sultan of Sulu in exchange for their help. 
According to Brunei historian Pehin Orang Kaya Amar Diraja Dato Seri Utama Haji Awang in his book Tarsila Brunei, the Taosug or Sulu army arrived at Cherman Island only to watch the battle from their ships. They landed only after the rebels were defeated to take war booty and enslave prisoners. This angered Sultan Muhyiddin, who ordered the Sulu army to leave without giving Sabah to them. Brunei denied giving Sabah to the Sultan of Sulu, as there is no written evidence of such a transfer. At the end of the 17th century, the Tidung kingdom centered around Tawau and Tarakan, dominated the east coast of Sabah from Paitan to Timbun Mata Island, and was called the Tirun district. Tidung's power declined when the area was occupied by pirates from Mindanao and the Sulu Islands, who used several river mouths as pirate bases to attack the west coast of Borneo to the Strait of Malacca. In 1761, Alexander Dalrymple, an official from the British East India Company in Madras, India, made an agreement with the Sultan of Sulu that allowed him to establish a trading base on Balambangan Island. Dalrymple named the island Felicia. In 1771, due to a dispute over trading rights in Marudu, the Iranan people representing the Sulu Sultanate attacked the Brunei Sultanate, which was seen as a rival by the Sultanate of Sulu. The Sultan of Brunei asked the Johor Riau Sultanate for help in sending thousands of Johor's sea people as soldiers to help contain the influence of Iranan and Sulu, and also to fight pirates from Sulu Archipelago endorsed by Sulu Sultanate. The Johor Riau Sultanate army was stationed in Kota Balud, Menkabong, and Sembulan. Administrative turmoil, fires, pirate attacks, and attacks from the Sulu Sultanate with the help of the Iranan and Spanish people brought the destruction of the Felicia base in Balambangan at the end of 1775. The base was re-established in 1803, but failed and was abandoned in November 1805. In Dalrymple's notes from 1793, there were several areas in Sabah including Tirun or Tidung, which was inhabited by the Tidung and Barao indigenous tribes. Tirun was the Tidung Kingdom area and the independent Barao area, starting from Kenyongan to the Sibuku and Tawau rivers. Magandaro or Magidara started from the Tawau River to Terusan Duyung between Sandakan and Mumyang. Paitan was from Simpang Meng Ayao to Paitan. The Marudu or Maludu area was said to be fertile, and along the border of Marudu, there was an area that began from Mount Tempasuk to Mount Keni Balu, which was said to be the source of Saba's rivers. Around the mountain area, there were settlements and villages of the Dusun people, which was said to be an independent territory. The Papal or Papar area started from Simpang Meng Ayao to Brunei, and was said to have many inhabitants. The inland and some coastal areas were inhabited by the Dusun people, while the river estuaries and coastal areas were inhabited by indigenous people who were Muslim, possibly the Bajau, Iranun, and Brunei. In the early 19th century, the Taosuk people began to settle in Terusan Duyung, Labukan Island, Domindong, Segaliud, and Sandakan. The coastal and beach areas were also inhabited by the Bajau people. In 1812, Captain John Hunt, who visited Sandakan, noted that Tuan Abdul led more than 100 Muslims, and there were many independent Idahan people in the interior. The Taosug influence in eastern Sabah increased through trade and slave activities. Many slaves were used to row pirate ships that captured people to be sold as slaves in Jolo. This activity declined into cruel slave trading and unrest that craved for blood. European ships were frequently attacked and destroyed by pirates. Westerners wanted to eliminate the pirates. The power of the Sulu Sultanate declined rapidly in the mid-19th century. In the 1830s, the Kota Marudu area was ruled by Sharif Usman as the king of Marudu. Marudu was a region free from the influence of Brunei and Sulu until before 1845, when Sharif Usman ended the loyalty agreement with Brunei and Sulu. In 1845, the British warship fleet led by James Brooke destroyed Kota Marudu due to allegations that it was a pirate base. On December 18, 1846, a treaty was signed for the cession of Labuan and nearby small islands by Sultan Brunei Omar Ali Saifuddin II to James Brooke, who became the governor of Labuan and consul general in Borneo. Labuan became a place for coal mining, trading, and a base to combat piracy. In 1865, Claude Lee Moses, the American consul in Brunei, successfully leased North Borneo from Sultan Brunei for a period of 10 years. He sold the lease agreement to the American Trading Company, owned by Joseph William Torrey. 
Camanus, an area in southwestern North Borneo, was chosen as a base and settlement called Elena. The Labuan Trading Company, a German company, tried to develop trade in the area claimed by the Sultan of Sulu as their sovereignty in North Borneo. The Sultan of Sulu's main motive was believed to be to free from Brunei's influence and gain sovereignty. As the concession period was about to end, Tory sold the rights to Baron Gustavus von Overbeck, the Austrian-Hungarian consul in Hong Kong, for $15,000. Overbeck then went to Brunei to request a legitimate appointment and ownership rights. On December 22, 1877, Overbeck was appointed Maharaja Saba and Raja Gaya and Sandakan. Sultan Brunei and the Temenggong handed over the sovereignty and territories of four areas in Saba from Teluk Gaya on the west coast to the Sibuku River on the east for an annual payment of $12,000 and $3,000. Because the eastern region of Saba was also claimed by the Sultanate of Sulu, and to ensure safe passage to the eastern part of Saba, Overbeck went to Jolo Island on January 22, 1878. A treaty was made between Overbeck and the Sultan of Sulu, who ceded the area in North Borneo to Overbeck for an annual payment of 5,000 pesos. According to the agreement, the Sultan of Sulu agreed to cede several areas to Overbeck from Sibuku River to Pandasan River, and appoint Overbeck in the ceded area as Dato Bendahara and Raja Sandakan as the highest and independent governing authority. Overbeck found the confusing history of Eastern Saba's conquest and who ruled the region. Sultan Brunei still claimed that Eastern Saba belonged to Brunei, while the Sultanate of Sulu held the de facto power in the area. Before 1878, the power along the northeastern coast of Borneo was actually controlled by pirates originating from the Sulu and Mindanao Islands. They roamed the coast to capture slaves. Due to their power and fear, the local population had long moved far inland, up the river. When von Overbeck arrived in Sandakan in 1878, he found that the first village was far up the river, while along the river, there were supply bases for pirate fleets. Overbeck found that there was no kingdom or state there. The ownership of the area was not valued and was not disputed. The area was considered Brunei's sovereignty, but at some point, Sulu claimed or held power with the support of several Sulu chiefs in Datu. For safety, William Hood Treacher, the British colonial secretary in Labuan, advised Overbeck to sign agreements with Brunei and Sulu. In the Sulu agreement, the Sultan directed the Datus, his representatives, chiefs, and people in East Saba to obey and submit to the new government, which was Overbeck as the highest authority in Saba. Diary notes from Don Carlos Quarteron, the first Catholic missionary in North Borneo, state that the Sultan of Sulu negotiated with Overbeck and Alfred Dent to obtain money and weapons to continue the Sulu war against the Spanish. By signing the 1878 agreement, the Sultan of Sulu agreed to surrender all claims to Saba and accept the condition of fully transferring the territory to Overbeck. The Sultan of Sulu then received an annual payment of 5,000 pesos, three ships full of weapons and ammunition, including an American-made Gatling gun. The Sultan of Sulu was uncertain about the actual extent of the Sulu sovereignty area, claiming the area from Sibuku to Balikpapan as its territory, and wanted it included in the agreement to transfer territory and power to Overbeck. In fact, that area was under the rule of the Sultan of Bulung'an and Barao, and also under Dutch influence. Meanwhile, the Sulu people inhabiting the east coast of Sabah each demanded payment of concession money from Overbeck for the areas they controlled. William Hood Treacher, the colonial secretary of British Labuan, also wrote a report to the British government about the surrender agreement between Overbeck and the Brunei Sultanate, which became the main evidence. The northwest coast from Taluk Marudu to the city of Brunei was relatively free from pirate attacks after the destruction of the pirate fort in Tempasuk in 1869 by British warships. Many chiefs in this area regarded Brunei as their ruler. Some rivers in this area were under the control of local tribal chiefs who were free, as well as Datu Datus of Iranan, Bajau, and Brunei, who recognized the Sultan of Brunei as their Islamic leader. In 1881, Overbeck transferred all rights to Alfred Dent and his brother, who established the British North Borneo Provisional Association Limited, and was given chartered status on November 1, 1881. In May 1882, Alfred Dent established the North Borneo Chartered Company and began administering North Borneo. 
Sir Rutherford Alcock was appointed as the first president, and Alfred Dent as the company's director. In 1885, the Madrid Protocol Agreement between Britain, Germany, and Spain recognized Spanish sovereignty over the Sulu Islands and limited Spanish influence only in that area. Article 3 confirmed that Spain relinquished all claims in Borneo, including former or Sulu-owned territories, and all islands under the administration of the North Borneo Chartered Company. Some policies of the North Borneo Company were not well liked by the people, leading to uprisings such as in Patas Damit in 1884, which was led by Panjiran Shabandar concerning tax collection rights. The Mat Saleh Rebellion in 1897 was also due to conflicts over tax collection and burdensome policies for the people. Mat Saleh was killed in Tambunan in 1900. The Antonam Montoros Rebellion in Rundum in 1915 was due to the enforcement of land taxes and the 1913 Plantation Ordinance. Antonam surrendered, but was sentenced to death in 1915. The first railway track in North Borneo was built in 1896, due to the increasing success of tobacco plantations that required farmland and transportation to carry the produce to the port. William Cowie was involved in the construction of the track, led by Arthur Joseph West, and assisted by a Murat named Gunan Lulis. Construction began from Bukau, Beaufort to Weston, and by 1906, a 193-kilometer track had been completed, connecting Tenham, Melalap, Weston, Beaufort, and Jesselton. The track was built using local labor and several workers from China for the Melalap track. The first telegraph line in North Borneo was built in 1894, connecting Hong Kong to Ramsey Point, Labuan, and continuing to Manumbok and the West Coast, all the way to the East Coast in Sandakan. The Hong Kong line had connections to Singapore and on to India and Europe. In May 1894, the Labuan line was also connected to Singapore. In 1920, the telegraph line was replaced with wireless telegraph transmission technology between Jesselton and Labuan stations. In 1922, the Prince of Wales visited the city of Jesselton in North Borneo during his Oriental tour in Asia. On January 1, 1942, the Japanese army landed in Labuan and conquered North Borneo. Due to the continued violence during the Japanese occupation, a rebellion known as the Double Tenth Revolt, led by Albert Kwok, occurred in Jesselton, Tuaran, and Kota Balud. It consisted of Chinese, Bajau, Dusun, Suluk, Brunei, Iranun, Indian, Sikh, and Eurasian people. Up to 60 Japanese soldiers were killed, and the city of Jesselton was captured by the rebels for two days. The rebels retreated after the arrival of Japanese troops from Kuching. As a result, Many rebels, including civilians, were sentenced to death by the Japanese military. North Borneo was liberated by the Australian Imperial Forces in 1945, and then administered by the British Military Administration. Due to World War II, the North Borneo Chartered Company was unable to rebuild the destruction in North Borneo. The company decided to surrender sovereignty to the British Crown Colony on July 15, 1946 and Jesselton was chosen as the new center of government to replace Sandakan, which was destroyed during World War II. Overall, the situation in North Borneo was peaceful and calm until the 1960s, when there was political awareness among the people of North Borneo for independence from British rule. In 1960, the United Nations General Assembly declared the granting of independence to colonized peoples. This declaration recognized the right to self-determination and characterized colonization as a violation of human rights, urging an end to colonial rule. The desire for independence from colonial powers, as achieved by other countries worldwide, had also reached the people of North Borneo. In 1961, the Prime Minister of Malaya announced a plan to form a new country consisting of Malaya, North Borneo, Sarawak, Brunei, and Singapore. A resolution was made by the Brunei People's Party in 1962, demanding Sabah and Sarawak to be returned to Brunei to become a new country, and rejecting the formation of Malaysia. The leader of the Brunei People's Party, A.M. Azahari, led a rebellion against the Sultan of Brunei, opposing the formation of Malaysia and demanding independence for Brunei and a merger with Sabah and Sarawak. However, the rebellion was successfully quelled in December 1962. 
Philippines and Indonesia opposed the formation of Malaysia. These countries demanded that the United Nations Commission be sent to Sabah and Sarawak to review the wishes and opinions of the people. Sukarno, the president of Indonesia, accused the formation of Malaysia as a continuation of British strategic influence in Southeast Asia through neocolonialism and Western neocolonialism, and it must be opposed. There were two delegations sent to Sabah and Sarawak, the Cobbled Commission led by Lord Cobbled and the United Nations Commission, consisting of nine members of the United Nations Secretariat, led by Lawrence Micklemore. Both commissions found that the majority of the people in Sabah and Sarawak want and support Malaysia. The Cobbled Commission was also responsible for drafting the Malaysian Constitution. An intergovernmental committee, also known as the Intergovernmental Committee, was formed in 1962 with representatives from the British government, Malaya, North Borneo, and the Sarawak government. The committee was tasked with discussing and preparing the draft of the Malaysian Constitution and several demands for the protection of the rights of the people of Sabah and Sarawak, which would be included in the Constitution and the Malaysian Agreement. North Borneo gained self-government on August 31, 1963, followed by its merger into the Federation of Malaysia on September 16, 1963. Malaysia was officially formed without Brunei on September 16, 1963. North Borneo was renamed Sabah, an armed confrontation occurred between Malaysia and Indonesia after the declaration of Malaysia in 1963, as Indonesia opposed the formation of the Malaysian Federation. Indonesian volunteers were sent to the Sabah and Sarawak borders to sabotage and incite the people. The infiltration failed, and 590 infiltrators were killed, while 771 became prisoners of war. After Sukarno was overthrown, and Suharto became the new president of Indonesia, the confrontation ended in 1966. On June 6, 1976, an airplane accident, also known as the Double Six Tragedy, occurred in Kota Kinabalu. The Australian-made Nomad model plane crash claimed the life of Sabah Chief Minister Tun Fuad Stevens and 11 members of his entourage. During the North Borneo Chartered Company's rule, Sabah's population was 104,525 people in 1901. After the formation of Malaysia, Sabah's population grew to 651,304 in 1970 and increased to 929,299 after a decade. Two decades after 1980, Sabah's population grew to 1.5 million and reached 2,468,246 by the year 2000. As of 2019, the population has expanded to 3.9 million, with foreigners making up 29% of the total population in the state. Sabah's involvement in the Federation has brought significant changes in administration, politics, social issues, and others. But Sabah and Sarawak have experienced slower development compared to states in peninsular Malaysia.